We now move on with the next presentation from Alastair Evanson, Head of Commercial and Business Development at Horiba Myra. Alastair will discuss Horiba Myra's recently launched Assured Cav ecosystem and how investing in virtual tools and methods such as driving simulators and digital twinning will help achieve the zero prototype goal in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so today I'm going to run through some of the challenges that we have when we're validating and verifying CAV and ADAS systems and the tools and approaches that we've developed at Hariba Myra to overcome some of those challenges. Okay. In, in order to start... We're looking really um, at increasing system complexity when we're thinking about new ADAS features. We're also thinking about increased uh, complexity in the environments that these features will operate to in as well. And that really gives us a few challenges. So first of all, what do we test? Have we defined correctly the things that require testing? Secondly, do we have the appropriate test methods to run those tests? And then finally, do we have a line in the sand to define when we've done a sufficient volume of testing or when we have a sufficient quality of testing as well? So whilst this is clearer for autonomy, a key point is that this is an issue for ADAS when ensuring the systems are robust and um, are ready for real-world deployment in the hands of our consumers in order to, to uh, be provided as a robust product um, for them. OK. So what, what do we test and how do we test it? Uh, the challenge with what we discussed in the previous slide is scale. We need an extensive test program to gain that confidence of quality and robustness, but we also need a systematic and structured approach so that we can tackle that issue of scale efficiently. We need to make sure that we have uh, uh, sufficient coverage for the feature um, by selecting a range of scenarios, and we'll come on to how we select those scenarios uh, in a little while. If we adopt a scenario-based approach, it gives us some benefits over traditional kind of range or accumulated test programs, which rely on observed situations and scenarios, uh, and, and therefore we can miss some of the more kind of edge case uh, applications and, and situations that you experience uh, in those real-world environments as well. But the key question that really comes out of all of this is what performance are we comparing against and how do we know that it is acceptable? So if we move on to taking that scenario-based approach and we lay that out, how do we then actually start to apply a workflow where we can build a substantiated risk-based argument which utilizes those scenarios-based methods and, uh, importantly, a multi-pillar of testing? So the workflow demonstrates how we form a risk-based argument to identify whether our performance is successful or acceptable. And the key here, uh, and, and the key from this workflow, is really helping to define that those scenarios that we've selected are helping us to prove a point. You know, they need to contribute to that safety case and that safe argumentation. So the way that we achieve this is ultimately through using an operational design domain of that system or identifying the system requirements and then moving through the layers of that workflow to allocate those tests into multi-pillar testing across simulation, across controlled environments and public roads, ultimately getting to the place where we gain an evidential risk-based argument um, which allows us to uh, understand the residual risk of uh, releasing that product uh, into the consumer's hands. Okay. So if we know how to, access to, how to assess what is successful, how do we identify what is acceptable or what performance we can achieve? If we look at the current practice, um, we operate around standards compliance, um, and we have excellent work that's been undertaken in things like NCAP and ISO, 
which really help to define um, some of the key performance characteristics that we can expect to see from systems like AEB, Lane Keep Assist, and so on. However, those um, protocols and standards have a relatively fixed uh, definition of systems and also operate on a relatively fixed um, application of, of, of scenarios in order to test them as well. On the other hand of the scale, we have a, uh, a, a full systems engineering approach. And this is really the long-term goal of how we can actually provide full traceability from a systems level right the way up and through the whole engineering life cycle. So here, we're applying a multi-pillar testing. We're applying a much more formal scenario-based application to the testing. Uh, and we develop a much more substantiated risk-based argument because we have full traceability from systems level right the way through to whole vehicle. And as you can imagine, in the middle, we have a hybrid approach. So the hybrid approach being above and beyond current practice, but not at a full-scale systems engineering approach. Along this hybrid approach, we're increasing the complexity and the number of scenarios, whilst also testing corner cases, failure modes, and identifying any gaps that we have across that hybrid approach. And really, to deal with the scale uh, and complexity of the, uh, of the testing, this is where we need to start increasing the use of simulation and increasing the tools for that simulation um, that we're all here to experience as well. And the important thing here and, and the important thing that we're noticing at Hariba Myra is increasingly our customers are very keen on demonstrating that they can um, achieve over and above what's required in current regulation and standards. So if we just take this hybrid approach and run through a quick example of how we can actually scale, um, uh, scale these types of scenarios. So here we have a standard AEB scenario. And here you can see that we have a fixed number of parameters. So if we look at um, some of those parameters, we have the actor type, we have the illumination, we have the velocity that that actor will approach, we have the offset of how that vehicle will intersect with that actor um, in order to trigger that AEB response. And we can vary some of these things. So for instance, the actor type, we could use um, targets like e-scooters, we could use uh, vulnerable road users with cyclists, um, child uh, on body, Bobby car and so on. But if we wanted to actually systematically fuzz or systematically uh, create more real world uh, parameters within that, uh, uh, within that scenario, we might look to actually change some other parameters. So for example, the appearance of that actor uh, in this particular scenario. Maybe we would want to change um, their appearance by dressing them in dark clothing so that they are uh, less, less obvious um, for the approaching vehicle. Uh, maybe we would like to change the road surface, use degraded road markings, um, also undertake that scenario in different weather conditions as well. So all of these are demonstrating the, the power of certain systems. It allows manufacturers to demonstrate how good their systems are over and above some of those um, fixed parameters um, that are required in that type of testing. So we move through a systematic fuzzing where we actually look at how we can blur um, all of those parameters in order to build a much more robust, a much more real-world test case um, and scenario profile that we can prove uh, the performance of that system. OK, so how do we do that? We need to apply uh, a systematic logic and reasoning into how we can actually bring together a number of those different parameters um, that we have. So we've adopted a um, methodology that's been taken from the Pegasus project. Some of you might be familiar with that. That's a, a European project which actually looks to identify layers of parameters that you would um, change within some of those scenarios. And you can see on the left-hand side of the table what those layers actually represent. As we move through that table, we've identified those parameters that we showed in the previous slide. 
And then we've started to build logical scenarios from it. And those logical scenarios are looking at the range of parameters that we want to change when we're actually testing these type of vehicles or, or testing these scenarios. So for instance, we might want to change the velocity anywhere between 10 kilometers an hour and 80 kilometers an hour. We might want to uh, introduce obstructions for the approaching vehicle, um, a parked car, a building, uh, a any type of, uh, of obstruction in, in, in that type of situation. And then moving through, we have our concrete scenarios in yellow. So this is where we're varying one parameter at a time in order to actually execute those scenarios. As you can imagine, that has a significant impact on the scale of testing that we need to undertake. So when we're thinking about just that single AEB scenario with those blue parameters, we're effectively adopting a scope of around 21,600 scenarios. Now, the requirement is generally to do around about 300 of those in testing, so we have a coverage of about 1.4%. Now, if we actually apply that systematic fuzzing approach and scale where we had those concrete scenarios against um, the range of parameters um, that we were actually looking at, the scope of that can grow pretty exponentially up to around about 50 million use cases. If we apply the, uh, the same coverage of 1.4%, we need to now execute 730,000 test cases. So you can see that the representativeness of actually showing some of those real-world scenarios really exponentially um, increases the amount of testing that we have. If we then move that through into a systems engineering approach, the scope increases to billions. And you're all familiar with studies that has been done by RAND and others that actually talk about the, the miles that need to be uh, experienced in order to, to gain sufficient coverage. OK, so how do we overcome this problem? Effectively, we need to consider this challenge from uh, a software level right up to full integration. And when we layer in our multi-pillar of testing, we make sure that we deal with that challenge of scale by introducing um, the relationship between which test method can be applied at which, at which level of the engineering life cycle. And by doing that, we can reduce the number of vehicles needed to go through full level vehicle validation, uh, moving towards the goal of zero prototypes. So as many other people have mentioned, vir virtual testing can be done early on in the process, and it forms a great evidence base for us to catch any design faults, errors early. And as we move through the remaining levels and test pillars, we need to validate and correlate some of those safety critical situations that we've already seen in simulation. Were the scenarios we've seen in simulation comprehensive and representative enough of the real world and has our system performed as expected in the real world? And do we have confidence in it? Now, Myra is developing a virtual process which links the left and right-hand side of the V in order to optimize the physical validation plan and reduce the pro size of the prototype fleet required to safely put an ADAS system on the public road. So although we follow a traditional V-cycle process, the area of interest is not only in the simulation of the ADAS system, but how that system performs when coupled with a vehicle model which could provide us representative chassis um, and powertrain models, for example. And when we do that, it enables us to run offline simulations to identify both the scenarios required in the defined section of our workflow, but also based on this, the ADAS system's performance, which of those scenarios we need to sample in the physical validation phase, um, and how we can do that by using engineering data. So it's really building on taking some of that engineering data and using that to actually define our scenarios that we want to do in the physical um, world as well. 
And as we announced yesterday, we have a new DIM 250 arriving at Hariba Myra. And this is really going to help us in subjectively assessing and optimizing ADAS systems virtually um, across uh, our engineering teams and our test parameters as well. OK, so we've run through the process um, and touched a little bit on the DIM 250 as some of the tools, but we've also undertaken a, a large-scale investment at Hariba Meyer in the UK in order to actually develop a complete ecosystem to support in the validation and verification of automated technology. A key component of that, as we've identified, is simulation and ensuring that we have the correct simulation tools in order to support that engineering um, and scenario-based workflow. So here you can see um, some of the activities that we have. On the right-hand side is a digital twin of a number of public roads that we have surrounding our site in Hariba Myra. So this allows us to effectively move seamlessly from our controlled environments um, or simulation through controlled environments out to the public road. On the left-hand side, you can see our static simulator as well. And along the bottom, you'll see some images, again, from the digital twins that we've developed of our proving ground. And also, importantly, the assets in the right-hand picture, um, the actual digitization of some of those assets that we deploy in those scenarios as well. So we have a highly correlated environment where we can move through simulation of scenarios, both offline or driver in the loop, out into the controlled environment for those safety critical scenarios that we've identified. OK, moving through into the physical ecosystem components, you'll see here our large dynamic platform. We call it a short cab highway. It's multi-use. It's used for both ADAS um, applications as well as traditional chassis and dynamic applications. So you can see um, types of applications we, we do here is high-speed AEB, really testing vehicles to the limit of their controllability. So from an ADAS perspective, we do um, lane key persist, high-speed AEB, and then uh, traditional chassis and dynamics uh, tire testing on that facility as well. To complement that high-speed application, we then have our city circuit, which again, we've recently upgraded. And that provides us with the ability to test in a urban and suburban environment. And in the middle of that, in the middle of that um, facility, you'll see that we have a parking lot. That's our automated valet parking area, which allows us to um, test both park assist, but also moving towards more future applications um, such as automated valet parking. On the right-hand side here, you can see where we've actually laid out a scenario to um, correlate some of the public road um, uh, observed situations that we've seen uh, in applications uh, around uh, the roads around our site as well. OK, so to finish off, I'm just going to uh, play a video which provides an overview of that life cycle of our application from simulation through to controlled environments, whilst also giving you an overview um, of those facilities as well.
Okay, thank you.